Good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Elder George Park Sr., coming from Christ Temple of Omaha. Our church is presently located at the Center Mall, Suite 130. That's our new address, Suite 130, address 1941, South 42nd Street, here in the beautiful city of Omaha, Nebraska. Our email is glparks1971 gmail.com. Our telephone number is 402-932-0880. And we would like to thank those who have given us a, a call to encourage us to have had prayer with us over the phone. Thank God for you. Our schedule, our services are as follow. Sunday services, Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. Good time to get up and learn about the things of the Bible. God richly blesses us in Sunday school. Morning services following at 11 a.m. We give God the thanks and the praise for all he's done the previous week and the expectation of him blessing us for the next coming week. Sunday night service is at 6 p.m. And we do have evangelistical service on Sunday night. We do have praise and testimonies that uh, you're able to give to the Lord. Bible class is at uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Come with us to study the Bible and learn more about the Word of God. And again, we thank the Lord for uh, all that he's done. We thank the Lord for being on the air again tonight. We thank God for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Again, he didn't have to do it, but he did. And aren't we grateful when God blesses us? We walk around in the blessings and the earth that God has made. Adam and Eve was on this earth. All the other prophets and all the other saints of God and everyone throughout history have had their time on earth. And I'm thankful for my time and my day. And I'm sure you're doing the same. Again, we're so glad to be on the air tonight. Amen. We count it a great privilege. I also want you to know that I am so happy to have my companion, my wife, with me tonight on the air. I know that you have seen me time after time, but my wife, she is with me today, and I'm so grateful. I feel uh, uh, just blessed for her to be by my side. And I want you to know she is Sister or Evangelist Stephanie Parks, and she is a qualified evangelist. Amen. She is uh, one of the students of Muskingum Bible Institute, and I mention that because she was not self-taught. She didn't sit at home and try to read the Bible on her own Amen. and then just get that word. But she had to set up under teachers as God ordained. Amen. That you're set up under ministries and you're set up under those that's able to expound and teach the word of God. The Bible speaks about there is the finest of the wheat. You can't get the finest of the wheat all the time just on your own study. Amen. So we thank the Lord for her. She's again qualified to speak to, uh, uh, to preach, teach, what have you. I also want you to know she is well a qualified prayer warrior. Amen. She has held many uh, all-night prayers in Dayton, Ohio. Amen. And I thank the Lord for her because we come to Omaha and we come with the blessings of God, but we come here to serve. And we have been here Glory to God. And we know that God is able to bless people. He knows that there are those who want to be saved, those who understand that these are the last and the evil days. Glory to God. And so he has sent, amen, and he has keep sending people that love God first of all, amen. And then after that, they're going to speak the word of God with boldness and not afraid, amen. amen. For the Bible says, if you're ashamed of him before men, God will be ashamed of you before his father, amen. So the day and time that we live in, you must know the word of God and speak the word of God, amen. It is to our benefit. It is our way out. Again, before we go into our broadcast tonight and our subject, we would like to go to the Lord in prayer. Will you bow your heads if you're able to at this time as we pray? for God's blessing on this telecast. Father, in your name, Lord God, again, we're so grateful. Hallelujah, Lord God, of your blessings, as we've already said. Oh, God, you've given us life, health, and strength, eyes to see, ears to hear. Oh, God, voice to speak, Lord, hands to move, feet to walk, Lord, all the things that we may take for granted. But, oh, God, you're so merciful. You're so kind. You keep us, Lord. Day in and day out, the mercies of God, hallelujah, is all around us. 
And we're grateful Thank right you, now for all that you've done. Lord God, we come before you tonight, oh God, with the telecast, the broadcast at our, uh, before us. Lord, I pray tonight that you'll speak through me to others, Lord God, right now. Oh God, we have the confidence in your word that you, was, that you said that your word would not return unto you void. Oh God, you would give it to us and we would speak it, but it won't return to heaven the same way it came. There's somebody right now able to listen, able to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Somebody is also sick. Oh God, the body may be racked with pain, but Lord God, you are God. You are merciful and kind God. You're able to heal. Lord God, you were healing then. You're able to heal right now. Lord God, somebody's behind prison walls, but Lord God, you open up the prison walls before, the prison doors, amen, and let somebody come out, never to go Thank back, you, hallelujah. hallelujah, oh God, you're a one-way God, yeah. hallelujah, you, you'll let them out, Lord God, and they'll stay out under your great power, you. oh God, I thank you right now for the anointing that I feel, oh God, in this broadcast. We pray, Lord God, that you'll speak with us, to us, oh God, and for us tonight, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have your way. We're we'll thanking and praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight. God bless you. We're so glad again to be here. We're going to speak tonight. Amen. This card as I'm holding up is 2-8. Uh, it is to refer to when you call in, amen, to this broadcast and our subject Amen. It's corresponding with this uh, number. Amen. We're speaking about, and the Lord has laid on our heart, because of the condition we found men and women in today, we thought that this subject was somewhat what we call redundant because everybody really knew this. Nobody has to preach what we're saying tonight because they already knew this, I thought. But it's not so, and I'm somewhat like uh, the missionary. <clears throat> Amen. That was over in Africa. And when she was living, she said that while she was over there, the Lord told her, said, go back to the United States and preach over there. Be a missionary in the United States. And she said, Lord, why would I do that? Why would I go back Amen. to the United States when they have everything? They have the padded pews. They have the carpeted floors. They have all the air-conditioned buildings and everything. And they said that it takes at least about 20 years to establish a church or missionary uh, 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 building or what have you overseas. It takes a long time for people sometimes to catch on. She said, Lord, they had everything. But he said they need to hear the word back in the United States. So she came back until the Lord called her home. But tonight, again, my subject is Glorious Church Part 2. Amen. Speaking out of the word of God in uh, Ephesians 5th chapter. Verse 25 and 26, the word of God says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. A glorious church, a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, a glorious church. Tonight we find ourselves in the place where we have to once again say that the church of God, what Jesus had started, is not a play church, not a toy church, amen. It's not something you can more or less take and leave it, church, altogether, Amen. But it, to him, it is a glorious church. He's coming back for the called out ones, not the building. And <clears throat> I don't think that I would have to explain that the Lord is not going to resurrect buildings back up in heaven. I'm sure nobody would be that narrow in their thinking that the Lord is coming back for a building and transport it somewhere else. But he's coming back for the people that's in the church, the called out ones, Amen. a glorious church, mm -hmm. a glorious people that they have worked on and allowed the Spirit of God to elevate their mind and their way of living to be without a spot, a wrinkle, a blemish, or any such thing. If it was impossible, then he would never get it. Amen. And so we're saying tonight that the church that we speak of 
is the one where in the Matthew, the 16th chapter, he told Peter, he said, upon this rock, he didn't say rocks, plural, on this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. That ought to give you confidence tonight, knowing that Jesus is standing behind the church. Jesus is the one who is supporting the church. Glory to God. And no matter what the devil throw at the house of God or the people of God, it will not prevail. I hope I'm encouraging somebody right now. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're faced with, it will not prevail. If you're in the church, if you're in the body of Christ, if you've been baptized into the body of Christ, whatever the devil is throwing at you will not prevail. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We want to give you the parable of how that when you have bought used things here, a car, wash machine, you go and to stores, use appliances and what have you, and you see a little nick in the, uh, the side of it or something like that or anything that seems like might maybe a flaw. But your pocketbook and your money and everything says you need it right now. You need a car and you need a wash machine or what have you. And so the uh, owner will tell you, say, now you see this little worn spot, don't worry about it. Amen. I'm going to guarantee that this is going to work. Hallelujah. And I'm saying is that you'll buy that used appliance. You'll buy that used cars. Sometimes people still go around, kick the tires. And I want you to know the salesmen laugh when you do that. But people, when they realize that they need something more than they, you know, can't live without it, they'll say, look, I need a car. I need a wash machine. And I'll go and buy this on your guarantee. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that I come into the house of God. I didn't come in to kick the tires. I didn't come in to, to, to examine the voices of the choir, to see what kind of life that the preacher was living. I didn't follow him home, and I didn't follow his children or his wife's home. Amen. But when I came into the house of the Lord, it wasn't because I needed another place to dance. I needed another place to show out. I needed another place to, uh, uh, to fake it. Amen. I came in with a sincere heart that I was tired. That's all the things that you need to come into the house of the Lord. You don't need clothes. All you need is a sincere heart. Amen. Glory to God to be saved. Amen. That's where I came in. I came in. I was tired of my cigarettes. I was tired of the alcohol. Yeah, it was fun, but the hangover wasn't fun. Amen. Glory to God. And I say that when they gave me an opportunity to get up out of my seat, Glory to God. The tears were flowing. I was uh, 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 wounded in my spirit. Didn't know what else to do. Amen. I didn't go to AA. And I didn't get a patch on my arm to try to see if this patch would, in so many days would cause me to stop uh, 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 smoking cigarettes. But I laid it all before God and I did walk down the aisle. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I didn't care who was watching. I didn't care who saw me. I didn't see a neighbor that I knew the dirt on this neighbor or I knew the gossip on that neighbor. Amen. It wasn't my time. Hallelujah. Lord, uh, you know, to, to, to play around. The Lord was dealing with me. And often we say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Where is the heart and the mind that the Lord said in his word that the harvest is plenteous? And the labors are few. I was part of the harvest that was plenteous. There are many others like that. Amen. And so I didn't come to the Lord. Amen. Wanting to find the dirt. Wanting to find what's wrong with the church. And examine it like I would do a car or an appliance. I came on the word of God. That the Lord was going to save me. That I, if I give my life to the Lord, he would receive it. Amen. People don't understand Amen. that very simple thing. Amen. And so, but we find today people are so caught up with gossip. They're so caught up with the things that they feel like they can laugh and talk about the church. And we ask a question on a scale of one to 10 what is your, uh, 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 you know, confidence in Congress? Amen. Or even the president. Amen. There's a scale that they have for that. So, what I ask the same thing what is your confidence that you have? in the church or the house of God. Some people believe that there is no good church, that there, everybody's rotten, they're crooked. But when you say that about them, say, don't judge me. But they're Amen. going to judge the house Amen. of God. They're going to tell you what, you know, what mm -hmm. the preacher, 
Amen. But I want you to know, amen, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And if you stay home because you got gossip for the church and the preacher's there, God's working on him in the house. But he's not working on you sitting at home. Amen. The Amen. preacher may go to heaven because he was humble enough to keep coming. Glory to God. But you're the one that sat at home and disobeyed the word of God when he said, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. As you see, some uh, 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 do as so much the more. Mm -hmm. That Amen. day that is approaching. What day is that? The coming of the Lord. Amen. That is our schedule. Is God's coming. Amen. I'll give you a parable. First, I'll give you a scripture where it says in the 8th chapter of the book of Genesis, verses 6 through 9, when Noah was in the ark, you remember the story, the flood was on the earth, all over the earth. Mm -hmm. And the water was so deep, so high. They tell me that Noah's ark eventually landed on Mount Ararat. Yes. And also they tell me that Mount Ararat is 17,000 feet high. Imagine the, uh, 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 the anger of God that would cause a flood over 17,000 feet deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means nobody that's swimming, you're going to outswim God. <laughs> no way. Amen. And he left it there 150 days. Maybe you got through it, you know, one day, but you couldn't get through all those days. Uh -huh. So what Noah and his family wanted to find out if the water had gone down. So what did they do? What was the test? They didn't stick their finger in the air and the wind to see which way it was blowing. They had a raven to go out. And this bird is a filthy bird, is a dirty bird. And so this raven, he would go and walk on all the bodies, the dead bodies that were floating around in the water. He wouldn't come back to the ark because he found a place that he could land. So Noah knew that it wasn't time yet. There's nothing to let him know that they needed to, you know, prepare to leave the ark. So he would wait seven days, and then he would send out the raven, and the raven wouldn't come back. But finally he sent out a dove, a clean bird. Amen. And this bird will not put his foot anywhere. Amen. And so uh, the parable is, is and, or the understanding is, that verse 9 says, But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, Verse 12 says, the dove which returneth not again unto him was when that dove found that there was uh, land. And Noah knew that the land had appeared because the dove was not a dirty bird. It will not find the garbage. There's garbage floating around in the world today. Amen. Amen. The people are doing things in church and they're calling it church. But some people are hypocriting and then there are some people that are struggling to find out what thus saith the Lord. And so they make an error. But then those who are not even trying to live for God, they play with all of this. Amen. They look at it and make fun. And it's amazing how people that don't read the Bible can tell you about church. <laughs> Glory to God. They can tell you all the dirt, all the things in the church. But I don't believe that God is going to allow you to get away with that. Amen. Here is an, uh, uh, a thing about when you uh, believe the word of God. And you believe that there is a right way. And I say that there is a right way because people don't use this term anymore. They don't say right or wrong. They don't want to be judged. They don't say good or bad or uh, uh, righteousness or what have you. They say denominations. When they say denominations, that means is they're including everybody and in who they think is all right. And I'll tell you something about a person who just believes in denomination. They're not going to stand for God. <laughs> I don't know anybody in the Old Testament or New, glory to God, that would stand for denominations. They would only stand for the word of God. Let me give you this example, example briefly. 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter, the 6th verse, and it spoke about how Micaiah and how Jehoshaphat, they wanted to uh, uh, go out and uh, fight an army or battle. 400 prophets. Mm -hmm. said, go up, the Lord shall deliver this all in your hands. He had 400 people to stand with him and say that, you know, you can have this victory. And so uh, 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 they asked and said, is there anybody else that we can inquire to see if we are all going to have a unanimous decision? It said, and um, uh, uh, the, the prophet said, or the man said, there is one, his name is Micaiah. Mm -hmm. But I don't Amen. ask him because I hate him. Amen. There's always going to be one that's not going to go along with the crowd. 
They tell me, he said, now, if you're not able to stand up for something, you're going to fall for anything. Mm, amen. And there is a day and time right now, people are falling for anything. Yes, they and are. And again, I'll say that mm. if you got denominations on your mind, that's only a constitutional thing. You're not going to find scripture, glory to God, for a denomination. But you're going to find the word of God, righteous and unrighteous. How do I get that way? I've got to find out through the word of God. I've got to have somebody say it. I've got to be in a place it may be called the church. Amen. But it's the reason why that people have found themselves outside of the ark of safety, outside of church, is because of the filth that the devil is doing. And Jesus said that the gates of hell would not prevail, but they don't hear that part. Amen. They're still into the dirt. We looked up and we saw that there is a wasp-looking type of a, a bee and those who live out in the country have heard of a dirt dauber. Amen. A dirt dauber. And this is in a book with <laughs> animals in it and a dirt dauber. And what it is is uh, the dirt daubers are of the thread-waisted type of an insect. They build their nests of mud and attach them under eaves of a building or walls or rafters, inside of buildings or under stones. Each nest consists of a series of tubes about an inch long arranged in a compact, compact group. Eggs are laid in the tubes and spiders are included for the youngs to feed on. The wasps we encounter in and about the house or buildings, we see gathering mud where, to, uh, uh, to soil, uh, uh, where the soil is most. And this is the object of a dirt dauber. We have dirt daubers around the church. They build their whole philosophy. They build their whole way of thinking on the dirt. They won't come to God. They won't believe that there is a glorious church because they love the dirt. And they'll build on top of a uh, build of dirt. You uh, uh, know somebody else, he's got some dirty words and, and he's got some dirty experiences. In church. Yeah, somebody else, got, yeah, it's dirt. Yeah, we, we together with the dirt. Yeah, we together with the dirt. But I tell you what, it takes courage to stand up against the day and the time. Amen. And trust me that God is never going to leave himself without a witness. Amen. Somebody's always going to stand up out of the crowd. Glory to God. I'm moving on. I know my time is moving on as well. But I want you to know that in the time, and I know this subject is going to have to deal with more than just two or three uh, broadcasts. But I want you to know that Jesus and God has been rejected down through the years. Amen. That people prefer the world more than they prefer God. Amen. They did that when they chose the first king, which was Saul. Amen. Told Samuel, said, go ahead, give them what they want. Say, they haven't rejected you, Samuel. They have rejected Amen. me. Amen. That was rejection number one. Glory to God. The, uh, the, uh, the next rejection, which was major, when Jesus was on trial and uh, Pilate says, who should I release to you? Should I release Jesus or Barabbas? And they said, release Barabbas Mama. and crucify Jesus. Jesus. And I want you to know they are still accepting Barabbas. Amen. Did I say that? Amen. The world is still accepting Barabbas. Amen. The man was a thief. Mm -hmm. They knew he was a thief. He could have stole from some of the ones that were saying, let us have him back in our community. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But I'm saying is that they wanted Barabbas, but they rejected Jesus. You think that spirit is not in the world today. Amen. Because they love, they, uh, the world loves their own. They love the filth of the world. And they're going to talk filth. They're going to talk, and I, I don't mean anything sexual or anything like that, but they're going to talk the dirt of the church. They're not going to uh, uh, um, uh, elevate or try to encourage somebody to say, look, keep hanging around. You know, keep around on the, uh, uh, at the foot of Jesus. God's going to bring you out. He's going to bless you. He's going to establish your life. He's Amen. going to make everything all right. Glory to God. They're not going to tell you that. Amen. Rushing in my time tonight, we looked up the word bosom. And it says that it's not something that you uh, think on a, a, a physical way as far as, you know, looking at the body parts. But it is something that the scripture spoke of. But it says that in the East, the Middle East, objects are carried in the fold of a robe. But the, um, uh, and it's called the bosom. But the Westerners, they carry things in their pockets. But Isaiah 40 and 11 said, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lamb in his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are young. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. For 2 Thessalonians 1 and 12, it says that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. 
I want you to know that the name of Jesus and the church and everything about the church is to be glorified, Amen. not to be made fun of like the minstrels. And I find that, and I'm not speaking to one class of people, but we find that there are those who try to make fun of the way that people used to dress years ago. Amen. The minstrels, and I know the white face that they used to have, they used to make fun of it. Amen. But I'm saying is that uh, nowadays people, they're so eager to make fun of the church. I know Flip Wilson did us a disservice when he made the church of what's happening now. We sat back and we laughed at how that we can poke fun at the church. Do you know that that spirit is working even greater today? Jesus. People are very eager to laugh at the church. You want to have a, a, a song fest? You got to have somebody in there telling jokes about the church. Uh-huh. That's what they get the glory on. But the Lord is not coming back for that. Amen. He's coming back for a glory, glorious church. Amen. He's going to present it to himself. Glory to God. I'm running out of time. What does God want? And I'm going to say this. God doesn't want your faith altogether. He wants your obedience. Amen. How did John the Baptist begin his ministry? By having faith in God. He wants to preach faith. No, he didn't. Did Jesus begin to say, have faith in me, believe? No, he didn't. Jesus began his ministry as well as John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. They don't want to tell it. And you cannot be saved in a church without repentance. That's what's wrong. People don't preach repentance anymore. Mm -hmm. They preach faith. And that's Amen. all you got is words of faith, but you don't have a heart that God can enter, that God can use. My Lord. Glory to God. That's why they can do things without even blushing, the Bible says. Amen. And so I know my time has just about run out. I'm going to have to deal with this some more because it's not only here in the Omaha area, but it's throughout the land. Amen. People have gotten to the place that they make fun of the church. But have you heard of the shootings that's going on? People have mass shootings all over the land. Why are they doing it? Because there's such a freedom in the land today. Jesus. Nobody's obligated to no word. Amen. I say they're not obligated to any word. No matter what you say, no matter what you say the Bible says, they say, well, we don't have that Bible. We don't believe that God. So we can do whatever we want to do. And so the spirit of killing, stealing, home invasions, all throughout the land, because we're so free, you say. Glory to God. Again, amen. My time is gone. Uh, we're Christ Temple of Omaha. We're located at room suite 130 at the Center Mall, 1941 South 42nd Street. And our email is glparks1971, gmail.com. Telephone number 402-932-0880. We're not mad or we're angry at anyone. Amen. But we have a job uh, uh, to preach in God's word. We have a, a, a God to glorify uh, and a God and a word to keep. Amen. Amen. Somebody's going to preach us. If I don't, somebody will. Amen. See us the next time, amen, on the broadcast. God loves you. So do we.